gotten chips in, enough chips in to make a raise. He wants to know exactly how much he has. The answer is he has 75,000. So it's a bit of a balancing act, isn't it? He doesn't want to raise too much to commit himself in case Norman has a bigger ace, but... Well, I think he is committed here. You know? It's just a matter of whether he's going to call or raise. He's going to fold. I didn't even think of that as an option. My goodness. Norman Pace putting Darren Bloom to the test. <laughs> yeah, that's those computers for you. You know what it might be? It just doesn't look like Norman Pace bluffs. I mean if you look at him, he's so he's a quiet he's a he's a quiet bait. He's got the glasses, you know, you'd never think he's out there robbing. Mr. Pace, who would have thought it? Behind those smiles he's more than capable of pulling off a cheeky little bluff. The snake's not gonna like it when he watches this one back. Can Norman keep up the pace? I'm afraid I am the possessor of testosterone, so uh, occasionally I've been known to uh, to give the gimlet eye to people. Yeah, I hide it well, though. I'm sort of a nice bloke, uh, but underneath that I'm churning with a desire to win. I've had to change my attitude towards poker because I always had a kind of a, oh, just love playing attitude to poker, but it's not about that. You have to go in there so focused and ready to win. You know, you, it's just like any other sport, really. I know you sit down and there's <laughs> not much exercise involved in it, but I think you have to get your mind right when you go in. And I'm going to go and sit at that table. I'll be watching everybody like a hawk. I'll be thinking about my position and my cards and what I'm doing there. And I'm hoping I won't make, do anything foolish because I'll be concentrating so hard on that I won't. Next one is 4-8 or? 4-6. 3-6. Oh, okay. That's more human. Well, the snake. Darren Bloom, I, I'm telling you, he's got, if he's anything like his brother, he has a lot of desire. And uh, he's just waiting for the right opportunity to strike. 8,000 from the short stack, 8,001 for each eight. <laughs> cool. Cool. Neckelman, tired of sitting on the sidelines, wants to take a flop with the 5-7 offsuit. I mean, this is one of, those mis one of those decisions that can compound itself. That's right. Wow. Neck this would be a wonderful... Good time to bluff by Neckelman if he let out. Interesting card on the turn. Wow. Now he's going to, I think he would have won it with a bet on the flop, but now the problem for him is that O'Neill has turned an open end straight. Open end means a queen or a seven would make him a five card straight. He doesn't need it. He already has the two eights, but he doesn't know that looking at all those over cards on the board, Jesse. Bet is 10,000, the pot is 28, cool. and Eamon O'Neill only has 29, now 19. There's now more in the pot than O'Neill has left. Neckelman drawing nearly dead. Oh, wow. wow, it's an eight. Put you all in. And that makes Neckelman the straight. Almost 11. And gives O'Neill three eights. It's going to be tough for him to lay down this hand, even though there's four to a straight on board, but he does. No, no, he's called all in. I mean, he did call all Ken, in. I, Ken, I missed that call. I'm sorry. And Eamon O'Neill will be out there. Sometimes when a guy turns over cards and everyone at the table just grimaces and says, that's ugly. Right. It's uh, kind of one of those situations. Yeah, the buttons move. I mean, poor O'Neill. He thought he got out of trouble with the third eight on the end, but it's made Neckelman a straight. The seven. Picked up from the litter, 7, 8, 9, 9, 10, Jack. Straight beats three of a kind, and we are down to five players. Eamon O'Neill out. What a hand. Now, can I, Patrick Deckelman was bluffing. He was bluffing cold. Only had two cards to win. He hit it. D mm -hmm. Do you think he could have won that pot anyway? Or Well, you know, I think so. A bet on the flop uh, would have won the pot as well. And, you know, one of the keys to bluffing, if you are going to bluff, is bluff early. You know, don't don't wait till it's too late. And if you're going to make a stand with a hand, make a stand early. As it is, you know, uh, Eamon here uh, made his hand at the end, but it was not enough. 
Well, Neckelman's a young gun, 22 years old. He's now got the chip lead, and he's just flipped over that 7-5 off suit <laughs> for the bottom straight on the river. Right. What are the other players going to think? Well, you know, the hand was pretty much given to him. So uh, it's going to be nice for him. It's going to build his confidence as well as his stack, and hopefully for him he can make a run at the top. Neckelman and Muldoon on top. It's the young guys. Let's see what happens. No one to play with? There's always PartyPoker.com. Five left now. And Kenna, I know it's early, but you are a pundit. Let's hear a prediction. <laughs> well, too early to predict, but Muldoon is out there with 166,000. And uh, for the first time, he is overtaken, and this by Patrick Pass. Nickelman, who's Pass. just got him edged by 1,000 with 167,000. So neck and neck with Nickelman. Cool. Any race? <laughs> no race. Well, there's been a couple of limp ins here. Right. Or I think Norman Pace. He's got the up. eight and nine of clubs, yep. Yeah, he opened up with a call and it brought in the blinds. As we go to the flop, six, seven, eight, a wonderful yeah. flop for Norman Pace, who has flopped top pair, open end straight. This would be an ill advised bet. 15, by Darren Bloom, but oh. he's going to make it. He's betting 15,000 to 12,000 pot, and if Pace pushes, Bloom will be. But what should Pace be thinking about right now? Well, right now he's thinking: Is this first of all, is this pair of eights good? And he's just thinking: Do I want to call or raise here? Uh, certainly, he's not thinking about folding. His hand is much too strong. Top pair is a very good hand, and. Uh, oh. He elects to flat call. I think I would have put in a raise here because any card that comes above an 8 other than a 10, which will give him a straight, makes his hand very vulnerable. And there it is. Just like that, Darren Bloom pairs his kings and takes a lead in this hand and is going to move oh, yeah. all in. You know, he risked the bluff on the flop and he was rewarded with making the best hand on the turn. And now, Norman Pace in a very difficult spot. Yeah, Bloom was on the arm, but now the pair, the strong right arm, and uh, Pace will never realize how unlucky he got. It's very tough for him to call here, isn't it? It is tough for him to call, but he does have a lot of outs. Any six, any ten, any eight, any nine. It's going to be very difficult for him to fold. Meanwhile, if you notice, if he would have raised on the flop, he would have won it right there. Now he's put himself in a very difficult position, as you can see the pain of the decision that he is facing right now. Yeah, this is no fun. Bloom stuck about a 50 ball in there, 50,000. And it would mean most of, their, of uh, Norman's chips. Right. And remember, you know, what we're playing for. One person goes through. Norman could fold here and still have about 80,000 left. If he calls and loses, he'll be down to a farthing. Well, at this point, with him thinking this long, certainly he knows now that he is behind and that he would have to catch one of his cards to improve his hand to win, and that's what he's determining. Does he want to take the gamble? I mean, doesn't Norman have to disregard the king? It's so unlikely that the king helped Darren's hand, although I guess we know it did. Or, Well, Bloom led at this pot on the flop. Now he's come firing on the turn, so he's shown real strength. Pass. And Pace does lay it down. You know, I think that's a good lay down. There's only one card to come. He had many outs to make his hand, but with only one card to come, he figured the gamble wasn't worth it. Looking at the chip stacks, Bloom back in business now, nearly where he started, which is uh, pretty good for him. It's a welcome relief after being on the short stack to find yourself in third place. The top two spots, 162, 152,000, only separated by 10,000, Jesse. That's tight. And 
Uh, even Broadhurst, who's a 